Hi there folks, welcome back to my channel and for this video I'm going to be doing another book review and this is actually a book that's taken me a while to read and get through and that's kind of part of the reason why I've not been getting through as many books as I would have liked this year because I was determined that I was going to finish reading this book that I wasn't going to DNF it, it was too important a book to give up on, I was determined that I was going to get through it even though it was proving to be a bit of a slog but then again it is the book itself I'm going to be talking about it is kind of quite a hefty book and the subject matter that it deals with is quite a kind of a difficult subject to be dealing with as well and yeah so but again it was too important a book not to sit and read and personally I actually think it's kind of one of those books that people should be encouraged to actually sit down and get through just for the historical importance of it and the book that I'm talking about is Roots by Alex Haley so uh, some of you might remember that there was, a, there was a TV series out in the 1970s based on this novel and if I remember correctly, it was the guy who played George LaForge in Star Trek Next Generation played the young Kunta Kinte and James Earl Jones was in it as well, so the voice of Darth Vader and he played the, Ale the, the adult Alex Haley so I think kind of, when I can, I'm going to try and see if I can get a copy of the original 1970s TV series and sit down and watch that because I know that there was one that came out quite recently, within like the last five, ten years I think. But from what I've been told, the original 1970s TV series is better and is actually closer to uh, the book itself. So, yeah, and again, it very much kind of deals with like slavery, and the family history of Alex Haley, the author. Uh, I think he had decided that he could start looking at his family history uh, after the death of, uh, of, of an aunt, I think, from what I can remember. And he starts kind of uh, looking into like, all the family stories that he'd, that he'd heard from a young age. He started working back and kind of got as much information as he could and wrote it all into the roots of the novel. So the story starts starts with what would be Alex Healy's great 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 grandfather if I remember, if I can figure it out correctly because I think he managed to get back six generations and so his great 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 grandfather was Kunta Kinte who I don't know if you can say he was the main character, but he's at least the most famous character out of the novel itself. And it starts with his birth back in 1750. And he was born in a village in Gambia in West Africa. And when when you kind of have when when you after he's born you very much can start seeing the life in his village and you start kind of picking up on the rhythm of life within his village and how everyone has a role to play, they all have a position within the village, they all have a job to do and they all know when to do, when, when things need to get done, how they need to get done and kind of just life in the village just has a way of kind of con continuing and, and it just has this kind of nice kind of flow to it when you're reading it and within the tribe itself, you've, you also find out that there's this, this importance given to people's names. There's that kind of almost a kind of power act to the name that somebody's given, and that, that how the name that they're given is meant to reflect who they are as a person, which very much plays into the whole idea of identity, which is something that does continue on through the rest of the book which is an important th an important theme especially when you are dealing with something like slavery and people being forcibly removed from their homelands and from their families 
taken thousands of miles away, stripped of their names and stripped of their identities essentially. So it is a kind of theme that very much is returned to again and again throughout the novel. And when the whole idea of slavery is introduced within the book, you do very much kind of pick up on the fear that a lot of people within the area have because they know that people have been taken, they've been removed and they've been taken away by the two bob or by white people. And the people don't know what's happening to these people. That they're just being, that all they know is that they've been taken away and the vast majority of the time they're never returning. And kind of stories start to develop about kind of what is happening to these people. And people are trying to explain and trying to understand what's going on. And I think one of the stories that is pretty much kind of passed around is that these people have been taken away to the, the land that the white people are coming from and that they've been eaten. And it very much this does kind of reflect and heighten the fears and the anxieties that a lot of the people within Africa had because they knew this was going on. And I did actually kind of quite like the, the fact that a, a quick reference is actually made to the ancient African city of Great Zimbabwe, which is where the country of Zimbabwe gets its name. And with Great Zimbabwe, when it was first discovered by Europeans, they actually thought that it must have been ancient Europeans that came and built it because they couldn't quite get it into their heads that it could have been built by, by Africans. Which, when you look at Africa, when you look at what was happening in Egypt, yeah, I'm like, they knew what they were doing. And within the, the start of the book itself, it is kind of, when, when you are starting to kind of learn more about what was going on within the slave trade, you do kind of very much kind of find out that there are, or there were Africans at the time who were playing their part within the slave trade itself that they were taking people from other tribes and selling them to white people or were kind of taking them or were, or were being employed by white people and going out to get people from other tribes in order to kind of sell them on as slaves. And it kind of very much kind of does show the fact that it, w it was a lot more complicated than a lot of people kind of may realise or may understand and that it wasn't a kind of a story of them against us. It was kind of very murky, very dark and very complicated and never a kind of pleasant thing to have ever happened in the first place. And within the book itself you also get to see how the brutality of the slave ships, that you have all these, all these young people, so all these who have again been ripped away from their families, from their homes, they have no idea what's happening or they don't, they don't know what's happened to their families, they don't know where they're going. So and they're being packed onto these ships like sardines. And and a lot of the times the, well, a, a, a large number were dying before they even got to the, to, to the Americas. They were dying from like disease, from uh, revolt, from injury. And a lot of the times they were like kept in the holes of the ships, uh, surrounded by sick, feces, bodily fluids, and yeah, and again, probably the, one of the easiest, quickest ways for illness and infection to spread, and yeah, and it's just the fact that anyone was actually able to survive, survive any of that, and it just does kind of highlight the fact that the whole kind of the whole kind of transatlantic slave trade was a brutal brutal act and once we get to the americas once the kente is taken off the ship you do very much kind of see his fear that he again he's doesn't know what's going to, he doesn't know what's going to happen next there's actually one point where he's actually that scared that he, he, he wants to go back on the ship because at least on the ship, he knows what's, what happens. He, he's had to deal with that for months. He knows what happens on the ship. 
your dialogue going to go back and deal with that then continue to deal with what he doesn't understand what he doesn't know it's again it's the fear of the unknown and he ends up that yeah he's bought and he gets taken away to go back to the plantation of his new owner and again it's the whole kind of fear of that he actually does believe is get, he's getting taken away to be eaten by this white man and and he's, he's also he's seeing all these other black people who are like help, helping the white man who are like working with the, the white people and he doesn't quite understand kind of why they're doing what they're doing he's, he's just struggling with the whole, the whole thing that's kind of going on around him and and at, at first when he is in America when he, once he's actually got into America he is just that determined that he's going to escape and get home and get back to his family in Africa it's just something in him is dry, driving him to try and escape and I, th and I think he ends up escaping about three or four times and on the last attempt that he makes he's finally caught and he's beaten up and given an, an ultimatum about, uh, by the slave catchers that he will either be castrated or have part of his foot cut off and he ends up having part of his foot cut off so he's kind of crippled for the rest of the life for his life and nearly dies and his life is actually saved by the, bro the brother of Kunta Kinti's original, original master who just happens to be a doctor and he, the, doc the doctor brother actually is that shocked and mortified by what has happened to Kunta Kinti he actually buys Kunta off of his brother because yeah in order to just kind of give him a chance to survive and once he has taken it to the new plantation he, Kunta does try and kind of come to terms with what is happening and what's going on around him and he becomes determined that he's going to learn the language in order to kind of try and kind of find out kind of how, how, how he can escape if he can in the future and kind of, so he can kind of learn about what life is actually like where, where it is that he's now found himself uh, but obviously escape never happens it's, and he ends up kind of remaining where he is for the rest of his life as far as we know and throughout the book you actually do get glimpses of the brutality shown towards the slaves not just by their owners but also by the white poor who could re resent the black slaves because they see it as uh, them having uh, a roof over their heads, foods, clothing all provided for them while the poor whites see it as the, the, them being left to struggle and starve and they, they resent that not without really understanding the point of view of the blacks that they, they want to be free they want to have their lives and to be able to go where they want and have that freedom which is being denied them because they're seen as being kind of subhuman and and there is a bit you also do see the kind of the blatant racism being shown to the slaves by the apparently good plantation owners because you, you do kind of see this throughout the book that a lot of the, the plantation owners a lot of the white people don't seem to quite understand why the black slaves can are a bit but kind of scared of the plant, the plantation owners are kind of scared of the white people and don't quite understand why a lot of the slaves will just kind of keep things kind of to themselves and not say what they really think because 
they, as far as the, uh, the, the slaves are concerned, if they, 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 will see, they see it as being if they displays out their masters, they could be killed, they could be sold, they could suffer. I do apologise there, I'm like, my, my camera decided it was going to cut out on me, mid-sentence, and yeah, so I uh, try to figure out where I was there. I think I was talking about how a lot of the apparently good slave owners never understood kind of why a lot of the slaves were kind of scared of and mistrustful. And I think a lot of times that they also didn't understand why a lot of the black slaves were rebelling as well. And it was very much they had there was this kind of fear amongst the white plantation owners of there being a successful kind of black, uh, slave revolt that they would essentially they were kind of scared that they would end up being killed in their beds. And it was just this kind of fear and paranoia. And and so every time that there was talk or news of there being a black slave revolt somewhere else, there was always kind of repercussions for the black slaves on the plantations and you see this in the plantation that Kinta Kinti was living on that that was always kind of there was always this kind of level of kind of fear and mistrust kind of going on sorry that was something I learnt off a firework even though it's not quite the fifth yet and um, so there was always that kind of kind of two two way kind of thing going with the kind of fear and mistrust between the plantation owners and the slaves. And as I was talking about identity earlier on and the kind of earlier on the video, Kunta Kinti does actually try his best and keep he keep, keeps fighting to keep hold of his identity as a free slave as a, or as a free African while also trying to survive as a slave in America and it's something that he does kind of struggle against because there's times when he's looking at the slave, other slaves and not understanding why they act the way they do and then there's times when he kind of realises that he's starting to act like that because it's, it's, it's a coping me mechanism, it's a way of surviving in the world that they are in that they, they just need to kind of survive and live and they need to kind of just kind of not do what they really want to do because it could put them in danger but it's but even though that is the case he still does try and hold on to his heritage and it is kind of something that he does kind of try and do for the rest of his life he kind of it's something that he he tries to kind of pass on because when his daughter Kizzy is born he secretly starts teaching her about where he came from and he kind of teaches her African words sorry another firework so he, he's teaching her everything that he can in order to kind of pass on the idea of him being a free African and passing on that form of identity. And at first not even his wife Belle knows that he's doing this. And and it is but it is kind of very much that Kunta wants his daughter to know who her ancestors were. He wants her to know kind of the bloodline that she comes from. He he wants her to understand the importance of that African identity and and it's kind of very kind of heartbreaking that later kind of I think it was halfway through the book or at least in the second half of the book because Kizzy knows how to read and write she ends up being in a relationship with a young man called Will and he decides to escape and he tells Kunta that he's planning on escaping and Kunta essentially tells him that he's not going to stop him, he's not going to stand in his way the only thing that he asks is not to get Kizzy involved because he knows if Kizzy gets involved it'll put her in danger and the one thing that 
Will ends up doing is he gets Kizzy involved. He gets her to write him a travel pass and try and forge it and make it look like it was being written by their master. So Will gets caught. They realise it's the travel pass that he's carrying is forged and he's essentially taken prisoner and he confesses that, was, that the travel pass is forged and I do apologise. And he does admit that it was Kizzy who forged it for him. So as well as him getting as well as as well as William getting punished, Kizzy is also punished as well and that involves her being again forcibly removed from her family and sold to a man called Tom Lee and it is after she is sold she ends up being raped by a new master and she ends up becoming pregnant and she has a son who is Chicken George and I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that Kizzy does actually have PTSD to some degree because there are, there's, there are moments where she is incredibly hard on, on, on her son, on George and it's on, on, on the surface it looks like she's been hard on him for no reason but when you, th when you think of, of it as her trying to cope with PTSD it kind of does certainly, it does certainly put it into context and I think that is something that is probably overlooked in a lot of cases with things like slavery that there were things that were going on that were traumatic and if I, yeah and it's just it does kind of highlight how brutal it was and And again, it has very much highlighted the fact that with Master Lee, with Tom Lee, so essentially Chick and George's father, he is again totally oblivious to why the slaves act the way they do, why they're kind of resentful, why they're maybe seen as being kind of sleek and sly. Uh, cause as far as he's concerned, he's he started out as being dirt poor. He worked he worked away his way up to where he is now. He was he's he worked to the point where he was able to make his fortune and and he just kind of can't quite get what can't quite understand why slaves act the way they do and it's just very much something that is highlighted throughout the whole book and he has as almost that kind of he is totally oblivious to the fact that of the, of the effect of things like death threats, families being ripped apart, people being removed from their homes, uh, beatings, then the deprivation of freedom. And it's totally oblivious to how that can affect people and how that can become kind of part of a way of life. That they ha they've, they've had to deal with this for so long that they have no other way of kind of seeing life and and he kind of looks at it as as well as him having worked his way up to a certain position and it looked like with a lot of the other masters as well he feeds them clothes and puts roofs over their heads and as far as he's concerned they should be grateful and it's just yeah it's just when, when you actually when you actually are sitting reading roots it, it has, it's like even even though it's kind of kind of glimpses into what was going on and you still have a sense of how brutal it was and how one the one thing that so many of the slaves just wanted was to be free they wanted nothing else they just wanted to be able to live their lives and they just want to be able to kind of be it's a lot of their lives be free and not to be owned by anyone else. And I think part of the reason why Roots is so powerful is because it does deal with this whole idea of identity. And with Alex Healy kind of going through his family history and discovering all these different characters 
and validating the stories that he heard when he was growing up. It is all about this kind of rediscovery of an identity, of a family history, of a lineage. And it has that kind of sense of giving him as a person a sense of where his family has come from, this kind of sense of understanding kind of what his family has gone through. And and you can almost kind of sense like towards the end of the book when Kuntakin when he does when Alex Haley goes back to Kunta Kinti's village, that you get this kind of sense of kind of pride that he's kind of or a kind of almost like a sense of belonging as well. Because when he goes back and he realises that he's actually found a village that his ancestors come from, he's actually been given the name of his ancestor. That it's just this kind of joyous moment in his life. He's discovered his connection, he's discovered who the old African was. And it's just this kind of just, you, you can just feel the palpable feeling the joy that he got when he kind of came across that and kind of found the last, the one last final piece. And, but again, it's one of those kind of things that, even though there is that kind of sense of joy that he's actually discovered that, or that discovered what, that aspect of his family history, there is still that kind of level of sadness because of the brutality that so many and his family have had to face because of the slave trade. And again, even though this was written back back in the sixties and seventies and the T V series back at back was out in the seventies, I still I, I think that this is a, a book that is just still utterly relevant, especially in today's times with what's going on. And it, again it's kind of one of those books that does help create at least something of an understanding of what happened, what people faced, what people went through. And yeah, and in all honesty, gaining that understanding is definitely a first step towards, or at least a kind of first step in the right direction. So I would definitely say that if you are looking for a book, if you are looking, is even though it is a bit of a doorstop, but if you are looking for something to kind of really get into your teeth into and to kind of make, kind of just discover something, I would definitely recommend Reading Roots by Alex Healy. And yeah, even though it might take you a while to get through it, it's definitely a book that I would say is worth the read and worth just getting through. Because again, it's, I personally think it's kind of one of those good books that are just really, really important. So uh, that's a book I think has probably taken up the best part of my year so far, kind of re reading wise. But I do not regret sitting and reading this because I think this was actually a book that I had been given by a friend a few years ago. It must, be, it must be about no more than five years ago and I think she'd read it uh, when, she, when she was a teenager when she was still in high school and as far as she was concerned it is a book that everyone has to read and I totally agree with her so she'd actually gotten this for me for it must be like a Christmas present or a birthday present and it's it'd been sitting on my shelf for a while and there's always that kind of thing of there's always other books to read, always other books that I was buying and getting in or, and I just thought no this year I'm gonna sit down and I was gonna read it and I read it and yeah I would definitely recommend anyone and everyone to go out get yourself a copy of Roots and just sit and read it. So I'm kind of quite aware of it's probably quite a long video now uh, so I'm gonna shut up now, let you all go. Hopefully you will all have enjoyed this video and I'll see you all 
in the next one. Bye-bye.